I'm just going to section her hair down to the top of her ear like this. And sometimes, you know, she has very uh, full, luscious hair. And sometimes you can really be afraid of that kind of hair. Uh, have you ever felt sometimes when you're going to do an updo, when you come in the door and you see the updo, what you really want to do is go, <laughs> so watch, it's, you know what it is, is taking the hair and getting them into tails that really makes the hair work easily. So I'm just going to take her hair and split it into two sections first. Smooth this together. And what I'll do to make this hair easier to sort of manipulate and style is split her hair vertically into two sections and just tie it like a shoe. Just like that. Pull those extra ends through there. This is a really great way to do a half up, but I'm just gonna slide about five bobby pins straight into that lace. We've done lots and lots of different looks in all the classrooms and presentations, and uh, we hope that you come by our booth and take a look at our book that has a lot of these looks on it, but watch. I'm gonna press the bobby pin halfway down and slide it up, halfway down and slide it up, halfway down and slide your pin up, just like that. This, these overlap each other and really lock that hair in place or rip the hair out by the roots in this case, right? <laughs> Good thing you're not a bleeder. Okay, okay, so just take this section, and I'll take the bottom section now, draw it together, and do the same thing. So for me, I like to get the hair into tails, especially when the hair is very thick. It makes it really, really easy to make combinations. And I'll split this one vertically into two and lace it together exactly the same way and just hold it with my thumb because you know if you can get the hair to work in tails first it's fast you, um, it, you, that you've got lots of variety and stuff that you could do with those ends but just make sure that your bobby pins crisscross each other and if you have this habit of pressing your bobby pin in so far that it comes way out the other side of the head remember as soon as the bobby pin is below the surface leave it alone don't keep pushing it up that's what makes spots and holes in your work just think about that a little bit. Okay, let's play those. So now I've got these tails to work with. And all I'm gonna do is just do a series of shapes on this, so watch. I'm gonna slide this bobby pin in at the top at five inches and turn it over. Crisscross it with another bobby pin and make a shape out of it. Take the tail of that piece. And remember, you know, the first part of the curl always goes good. It's the second one that usually flops at the base. So every time you make one shape, tease it 12 times at the base so that it lifts up. And see how that fills in that shape there? Let's get rid of that pin. And take the next section. And when you're holding hair to make a form, hold it like you're going to cut it wherever you're standing, like you're cutting a layer. I'm putting this bobby pin seven inches away from the base, so when I turn it over, it comes way over and gives me a larger kind of shape right in the front there. Okay? So that's f just from one section of hair. We'll take a section number two, and we'll just keep it as one. We want to keep this as simple as possible. We don't want the client to think it's possible, so make it look as difficult as possible. Oh. Oh, I like to make little grunting sounds when I'm working so that the client appreciates more what I'm doing. Like, woo, woo, woo. Or, oh, this is not so kind of wrong. Okay. I'm going to take that, right, that next section from it, tease it, and just work it right across the front. If you move your body when you're teasing, the hair will pretty much do anything that you want. It's pretty cooperative. So I'm going to take that back, slide a bobby pin in, turn it over, and then slide it in like that. Keeping the hair nice and soft and not too foo foo poo poo la mama ka ka tu tu la la uh, is really good. Okay, I'm going to take the little front section. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And up the hair shaft, nice small little strokes, and just walk the hair around her head. So it'll respond to the movement I want to give it. Hold it vertically like I'm going to cut it. Slide the bobby pin on. 
Now, if I lift the end up, it's going to give me more height. If I let the end fall down, it'll keep the hair lower and flatter. So watch when I take the end of this now. I'll just tease it up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, middle, 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 middle. And then over here, <laughs> didn't sound right, did it? Okay, and turn that over and just slide it in. Be more natural. Let the hair relax. Do you know, I'm a hairdresser from the golden age. <laughs> no, the hairdresser from uh, the classic era where we had to do perfect work or the clients wouldn't come back and they wouldn't. Um, but now you want to keep the hair softer, not so uh, uh, solid and lacquered looking, okay? So that's just two sections of hair. We'll take this front side section right here. We have a little bit of foo-foo out there in the front. And take this section and a one and a two and a three, four, five and a six and a seven and an eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's move that back. How many of you have been uh, trying that when you're styling hair, doing the same number of strokes with each section that you pick up? Three people? That's awesome. You can see it's one of the most popular techniques in the industry. <laughs> Do you know what? Haven't you ever had this experience when you're, you're looking at the front and you look down and she's looking right at you, but you're thinking this when you're looking at her hair. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, nobody's going to have this look. Mm -mm. Oh, no. This is the latest thing from, and then you try to think of a country that she's never been to. Like in Lithuania, this is hot, 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 hot. Okay, that's gonna bring that across. I'm gonna sweep that across the other side, leave a little shape out there. Okay, we we'll just clean up the rest. Okay, add flair to your work. To younger stylists, you know, if you get a bit nervous when you're doing updos, you don't have to do anything. Watch, I'm not doing anything. But she thinks, oh my God, this guy must have come from somewhere. Okay. Just remember your profile shapes. You see, when I sweep that section back, it's horizontal, parallel to the floor. And that's what keeps the style looking modern, regardless of the textures and the shapes and stuff that you put in it. So just try to keep this line even to the floor and not sweep the hair up or down. Oh, sorry. Make your clients pass the bobby pins, and you can always say to them in the beginning, now you do a good job passing these pins, because if your hair doesn't turn out, it's not my fault. Okay. And again, I mentioned this yesterday. We all do this. Do you know what you're trying to do? You're trying to squeeze her skull into a different shape that makes the hairdo look better. Okay. So we'll just take this section along this side. So we just have these bottom sections. And watch how simple this is going to be. We're going to go back and forth. This will be uh, at five inches. Turn it over. It'll slip right inside this one. Crisscross that bobby pin. And, you know, we try to make things go back and forth, more of a horizontal pattern to the hair. It's very modern, very not uh, um, so much of what we used to do. Cross that. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. You know, it's not just me. It's when you're doing a wedding party, there's always the Danish and muffins and coffee, and you can't help yourself. Everybody gets so excited. But while you're doing the hair, while you're talking, I know you see those little white things flying through the sky. That's part of the walnut muffin that you had. It's going back in her hair. You go, oh, you look so good today. Oop. And you, you can be very professional, but don't deny it because it's not coming from the ceiling. I always look up and think, what's that? It's a piece of tomato. That's what it <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm just going to just tighten up this little bottom section. Now watch how we're going to add a little bit of different sort of look across the bottom by starting with a three-inch shape. So I'm going to put a bobby pin at three, turn the end over, slide it up, come back across the head at three, turn it over and slide it in. Look how it covers up all that stuff. And back at three.
know, if you're ever doing an updo and you get lost, just try turning around once like that. And maybe you'll remember where you were when you come back. If you don't, just keep turning, baby. Just keep turning. Okay. And three. Oh. <laughs> I always like to, I always carry a pair of shears in, in my pants, so I always go, oh, look at that hair over there. I'll just leave those two little tails down there. I would tell her also that that's the latest thing in Lithuania. And I'm just going to drape this back to blend it in a bit more. Comb. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> How rude. Let me just get you a fresh one. Ah, oh, there's one. Okay, we'll just take this back here. How many of you have seen that joke a hundred times, but it's just... <laughs> I still only have four. I've been coming here for ten years, four jokes, and I'm still here. So, thanks very much. Wow.